in this video, we're going to determine equations as either secant or cosecant from graphs, and I've taken these graphs from Desmos.com. Okay, so the, the way that this is going to work is I, I'm going to show you a graph, and I've talked about in some of my other videos how there is basically the, the guide graph going through. So when you see one of these, what I would suggest is that you try to, let's see if I can come up with a better color. Um, let me try this pink color. Can you see that? I think you can see that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect these points. And okay, so what I want to do now is just figure out what is the equation of this guide graph. And then if I figure that out, then I can reverse engineer whether this is secant or cosecant. So this is going through um, 0, 1. And if you're, you should be pretty familiar with sine and cosine by now. And we know that cosine, let's see, I'll, I'll write this out as a cosine of bx. So cosine has the point 0, 1. So I feel pretty confident that this graph probably is related to a cosine bx. And so then we can just kind of reverse engineer everything from here. So one thing you can notice just from looking at the graph, so this is like a perfect dividing line, right? The x-axis really serves as a perfect dividing line. And the height here and the height here are both one. So that's one way I can tell that the amplitude of this graph is gonna equal one. So since I can tell that my amplitude is one, I can just write this as cosine of bx. Now, as far as figuring out what the b is, you have some options of, of how to do this. Um, I could leverage, let's see, I could leverage this point here, pi over four, negative one. I like to use something that just has numbers in it. I guess you could also use, um, you could also, uh, you, you really wanna use something that has some numbers in it, um, actually, because if you have zero in it, it's just gonna kind of cancel everything out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in negative one, cosine, and then pi over four times b. So what you like one way you can figure this out is you can think of so what value of cosine would normally equal negative one? Normally cosine of pi equals negative one. So what I can do then is th if this equals this, then I know that my cosine value will equal negative one. So I can set pi over four b and set that equal to pi. And if I solve for this, b will equal pi times four over pi, so that just equals four. So that would be my b in this case. So then my final answer, I'll write it up here, would be y equals cosine of four x. So that's my final answer for the guide function. So now to actually get what the, the, the real answer is, so let me clear, clear some space here. Um, so now I just have to write the equivalent secant or cosecant functions. Remember, cosine and secant go hand in hand, right? So they're reciprocals of one another. So the function that I'm looking for then is secant of 4x. So there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of reverse engineer these. This is just like one way. This is kind of the first way I thought of this. So up next, I have this graph. And so I, I want you to notice something about this graph. The graph is touching, so the, like this high point is touching the x-axis. So what that says to me is that this graph has been moved up, right? Because normally there's like an equal distance between the x-axis, like we see here. So there's this distance of one and one. And here, I have a distance of two here and then zero here. So I can tell just by looking at this that this graph has moved up. Um, I also notice that I have an asymptote of zero. So for an asymptote of zero to happen, um, that would tell me then that I have probably the, the function sine. So let's see, I think I'm gonna have something like k plus sine, let's see, k plus a sine bx. That's probably what I can figure out. And when you can tell that you've had a translation, you just wanna be careful when you're making your guide function. 
So make sure that you're just using the points on the graph, um, like that you actually see on the graph. Don't don't depend on the asymptotes. Um, instead, make sure you're just kind of going through the, the points that you actually see on these um, graphs, so on the red part in this case. Okay, so um, I think we can figure out amplitude just by looking at this. So here's the highest point of my sine function and here's the lowest point. So this goes a distance from zero to two, right? So the amplitude once again can be found by taking half of this distance between the two points. That's kind of what the definition of amplitude is. So my amplitude is just gonna be equal to one. So I don't have to worry about amplitude in this case. So we are now at k plus sine bx. And then um, how, how far does it look like this graph has moved up? Well, a big hint here is that your x-axis needs to kind of come in between the, the direct middle of either the two red lines or in the direct middle of the sine function. That's a thing that you want to have happen. So with that in mind, my amplitude or actually my, my middle line is right here. So this is directly halfway between the two red graphs. So that looks then like my graph has been moved up one. So I can fill that in too. So now I just have to figure out what is B of X or BX. Um, okay, so I wanna use the points on the graphs. I'm gonna use this point pi over two, two. So two equals one plus sine of pi over 2b. So if I subtract off that 1, I get 1 equals sine of pi over 2b. Now what you want to think about is what sine value that is close to this would typically equal 1? Well, um, that would be sine of pi over 2 normally. Sine of pi over 2 equals 1. So if I set those equal to one another, pi over two equals pi over two b, I can see then that b just equals one. So this whole graph is just gonna be, um, the, like the, the guide function here will be just one plus sine of x. So let me, let me clear some space and I'll write that out. So we have the guide function is y equals one plus sine of x. Now I have to translate that to the red function, so is it a secant function or a cosecant function? So sine and cosecant go hand in hand. So my final answer is um, y equals one plus cosecant of x. So there you go. Okay, so per usual, if you're watching this video, I highly recommend that you try to figure out the equation for this last one. Um, I think that you will kind of get this a lot better. So pay attention to the asymptotes. Um, allow these points, so the ones that you actually see on the red graph, allow those to drive kind of what the guiding function is. So pause the video here, give it a try, and then when you think you've got it, hit play. Okay, so once again, I see that I have this asymptote zero, zero, so I know that that typically happens when I have, um, it's like indicating to me that this is probably gonna use sine as the guiding function. And then the other thing that I notice is that once again, this graph has been moved up, like it looks like it's been moved up and it's touching the x-axis. So I think for my guiding function, I'm gonna have something like k plus, um, sine or a sine bx. Okay, so first question then is how far up has this moved? So using the coordinates, this goes to zero and this bottoms out at, or, so we, here's the highest point here, zero, and then here's kind of the lowest point here, two. So I go from zero to two, those are kind of the high and low points. So once again, that tells me that my amplitude, if I take two minus zero, my amplitude is gonna be equal to one. So that's my a. And then how far has this graph moved up? So again, I, I brought up that you wanna have equal distance between this point and this point here. So we know that the the um, kind of that asymptote cutoff line is, has moved up. 
And so the direct halfway point there is going to be 1. So this is, this is a graph that's been moved up by 1. So I feel pretty confident to write this as 1 plus sine of bx. And then getting, getting rid of that line, so just paying attention to what's going on with this sine graph here. It's actually going, so if it were to start um, here, it, it looks like it's, it's been flipped upside down. Normally we see the sine graph go up and then down and instead it's going down and then up. So one other thing that that tells me is that this sine graph has probably been flipped and equal and so this is 1 minus sine of the x. So now I feel like I can probably fill in one of the points. So I'll use this point here negative pi 2 so let's see I get 2 equals 1 minus sine of negative pi b so if I subtract off the 1 I get 1 equals negative sine of negative pi b and so then I get negative 1 equals sine of negative pi b. So the question is where does sine equal negative 1 when we're on our unit circle? Well sine will equal negative 1 when I have negative pi over 2. right? So that's normally when sine equals negative 1. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to set this part equal to negative pi over b. So let me let me clear a little space here. So I have negative pi b equals negative pi over 2. So then what I'm ultimately going to get, I divide both sides by negative pi, I get b equals 1 half. Okay, cool. So I'll clear some space here. And so now we actually have figured out what our sine function is. Our sine function is 1 minus sine of half x. And then I just have to change that to be 1 minus cosecant of 1 half x. And so there's our final answer. So those are a little tricky. Um, so take, take your time with those. Um, feel free to ask any questions or leave any comments if you have them. And otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.